Hey, what's up you guys? Today we will be talking about pulmonary embolism. So pulmonary embolism, in simple way, the cause of pulmonary embolism, usually it's a deep vein thrombosis that just goes from the leg to the lung and just it's the pulmonary attacks, like a heart attack, pulmonary attack. So any attack is serious. So we're going to talk about stroke, brain attack, which is stroke, lung attack, which is pulmonary embolism and heart attack. Heart attack is common, but this is the same thing, same mechanism, emboli. So, usually caused by a DVT. How do you recognize a DVT? So, usually for DVT, you gotta know it's more than two cent centimeter difference. Difference from right to left leg. That's one thing. Another thing you can find on DVT, you can do Doppler, okay? If you found one, then you do, you start with heparin, heparin, and then you bridge to warfarin. So what do you do for DVT or pulmonary embolism? So pulmonary embolism, there's some criteria to we do to diagnose. We do, it's called Wells criteria. There are certain things, we give it a three, score three, one, we give it one and a half, and uh, there, other one we give it just one number one this is the scoring system the three DVT if somebody has a DVT this is a three okay if somebody other diagnosis unlikely other diagnosis unlikely what does that mean like almost always like if there's if there's tachycardia and hypoxemia usually that's the main thing tachycardia and hypo if there's a DVT, there must be these things. If there's no these things, then this is not a DVT, not, not a pulmonary embolism, sorry. So usual, other things is pleuritic chest pain, sudden and onset, other things that you want to consider. One and a half, usually, if there is history of DVT, not having it right now, but history in the past. If there is tachycardia, okay? So that's why uh, this is t the tachycardia, is one very important. If there is history of immobilization okay this is for one if there's a surgery there's cancer sorry surgery with immobilization or if there's a hemoptysis okay so th these are the things that you want to consider for management of DVT so if the Wells criteria, okay, if the now scoring, scoring, the final scoring. If it's more than or equal to four, equal or more than four, then usually we could do go CT scan. If less than four, then we usually no CT. So these are the things that you want to consider in management of, of uh, uh, pulmonary embolism. Other things that you want to see with the management, you got to look at the different types of PE. So there are four types of PE. Could be asymptomatic and could be symptomatic, could be submassive could be massive okay so submassive and massive usually in the ICU symptomatic is the inpatient asymptomatic outpatient okay so it makes sense so what is the difference between each and every single one of them mm, let's do it let's, let's make it all in the same level so let's do it here types So I just arranged them so that it would be easier because we're going to compare all of them. So for PE, the different types it could be asymptomatic, could be symptomatic, could be submassive and massive. Okay. So asymptomatic, usually they just go home. Why? Because there's no symptoms it's from its name. Uh, there is no heart strain. That's a very important thing. No heart strain. And there is no hypotension. Uh, 
and for the treatment we do heparin to warfarin and you can even do noral, novel oral anticoagulant okay and usually home it's a home thing you just do it at home for symptomatic you will find symptoms that's the other thing but no heart strain no hypertension and you treat it with heparin warfarin and usually stay on the floor okay we monitor the ion and everything if it's submassive usually they have symptoms there is heart strain but no hypotension usually heparin infusion that's how they treat it and usually stay in the ICU this one home cinema if it's massive this which means there's symptoms there's heart strain and there is hypotension and usually we start we give them TPA too and we put them in the ICU too or you can do umbilectomy okay so that's basically the management of the pulmonary embolism okay simple and easy first initially you gotta look at the Wells criteria look at the presentation is a pleuritic chest pain sudden and onset pleuritic and there is a hypoxemia tachycardia look at the DVT immobilization cancer hemoptysis then you score it and then if they're asymptomatic no heart strain or decreased blood pressure heparin warfarin same home if there is symptomatic no heart strain or blood pressure heparin warfarin but put them on the floor uh, just in case anything happen if it's you, the submassive it's symptomatic heart strain but no decreased blood pressure heparin infusion put them in the icu if it's massive usually symptomatic heart strain and hypertension you start in tpa the icu or you can do embolectomy too sometimes okay so these are the management of a pulmonary embolism